Hi everyone, this is Nathan with theebookreader.com. For this video review, I'm going to give you guys a look at the Sony PRS-T2. This is the latest ebook reader from Sony, but uh, it's pretty much exactly the same as the Sony PRS-T1 from last year. Uh, there's like a couple of subtle differences, but for the most part, they're very similar. I mean, uh, the design's exactly the same, the shape and size. Uh, the newer one's lighter, uh, so the main difference is we got a different button layout. So the buttons are pushed up higher down here, and we've got different uh, icons. Whereas the PRST1 had these silver icons and they were further down. So I like the placement on these ones since they're up higher. you got more room down here for your thumbs to hold the reader. Uh, but the buttons definitely are a little clanky. They're kind of clicky and uh, feel a little plasticky. They're not real comfortable. So these buttons actually feel a little more comfortable. So the other main difference obviously with the black one is the newer one. It has a matte finish which is really nice. So like if you're using uh, the light. It doesn't reflect off the edge like it used to with this one. You get the ref light reflecting off there and that's kind of annoying. So I do like the matte finish. Um, I do like the lighter build. Uh, so it does have some advantages. Uh, the features are pretty much mostly the same between the two. Uh, so the uh, PRST2 adds a couple of things. We've got uh, the Evernote set up in here. So you can use Evernote. Um, so you can put your notes onto Evernote and you can uh, download um, so what you can do is you can set your Evernote up to use Evernote clearly. Uh, I tested this out with one of my blog pages. So if you want to um, download web pages, so if you're at your web browser, you can uh, select to download, uh, send it to Evernote, and then you can download it here to your reader, and then we can go in and load that up. It's actually in a special section in your bookshelves here. Uh, the bookshelves, uh, I don't know why it takes so long to load. This is kind of one of the more annoying aspects of this. It's not like I have a ton of books on here. I have 70, but it does take that to load uh, several seconds usually when you hit it. So when I was talking about Evernote is you come in here and then you go to the Evernote section. So the way that a menu system is set up is kind of slow and painful. I don't know why they just can't put everything a little bit easier. But anyway, so you get into here and you have your um, web pages that you can download using Evernote. So here's my uh, review of the uh, older Sony. So I downloaded it and what it does is it uh, removes all the uh, ads and everything and then you just get the uh, regular um, text and it also has these highlighted ones here are, um, they are hyperlinks so if you click those it will open the web browser to open whatever link that opens and you can also use the other features that you would with an ebook you got the different font sizes of course so that is a new feature and it is pretty cool as far as the Evernote setup goes the other new feature um, there are some limitations with the Evernote though so if it's a DRM book you can only upload 140 characters for highlighting and stuff like that but uh, if it's non-DRM, you don't have those limitations. So one of the other new features here is Facebook setup. Um, unfortunately, for whatever reason, it doesn't work at all for me. Um, even once it connects to the network here, it just shows this loading screen and then that does, never does anything else. So Okay, so let me go ahead and show you some of the other features on here. As far as the menu system goes, we've got the public library and the web browser. So you can set up to download ebooks directly from your public library using the reader. Uh, I already had a video for that for the PRST1 and it's the exact same process now. I also had a video for the uh, web browser, so I'll put links to those up if you want to watch those because they're uh, it's the same process. Like I said, this reader and the PRST1 are uh, very, very similar. So we've also got your other options in here for um, notes. You can go in and create um, notes in your books and you've got your list right here. And then you've got other, uh, you can create text memos as well with the uh, on-screen keyboard. You've got a little icon up here. And then you can create uh, text notes if you want to create like a little checklist or something. Shopping list. So we've got the picture viewer also. Uh, there's a whole bunch of settings in here. I'm not going to get a whole lot of detail. One of the newer settings that we have is uh, partial page refresh for ebooks. It's up in here and refresh display. I, I kind of don't really like it that much because it does uh, get more ghosting, but uh, you do have the option to turn that on and off in here. You also have your dictionary option. So the, uh, the uh, PRST1 has the advantage with dictionaries as well. It has 12 dictionaries, whereas the PRST2, for some reason, they removed a few of the dictionaries. Um, and we can, I'll show you that later with the ebooks. And this is where you can actually enter the word into your dictionary, but uh, where you change it was that other selection over there. So let's go ahead and show you an ebook and how that works. So when it comes to reading ebooks, uh, the reading experience is very similar to what was on the Sony PRST1. We've got the adjustable font sizes. Um, we've got some different advanced features in here for uh, we can navigate page and we can also set custom view. So let me go ahead and show you some of the different stuff we have in here. Uh, we've got the original font set right now. We've got uh, different selections here. I tend to like this one. It's more bold a little bit. Um, and we've got the different font sizes, of course really really big font size and really tiny uh, 
Um, so one thing you can do with the custom view is you can uh, crop margins. So the margins are actually pretty good on this one, so that it doesn't really need it. But there's some different settings here. You can use the manual setting or the auto setting. Uh, the manual setting actually is pretty cool because you can just adjust exactly where you want this uh, margin to cut with these little arrows right here. So that'll make the text. Uh, that's another way to kind of increase the text size. If you have, if your book has really large margins, you can just do that to increase the text size. Uh, so if you hit this icon down here, your page number, it brings up the uh, navigation here. You got the table of contents. As you can see, it's a nested table of contents. Um, we've also got the, let me go ahead and get rid of this custom view. So other things in the custom view, we've got the page mode. Uh, the adjust view is more for uh, PDFs, you can adjust sort of the background and contrast colors here. Some different presets and you can also set it to custom. So these are some of the more advanced settings that like not a lot of the, a lot of the other readers have. So this has the uh, uh, touch screen too, so the multi-touch you can zoom in. Pinch zooming. And it shows you where you're zoomed in with the little box down here. So you can do the on screen handwriting, on screen notes. So then once we're at so then we can get these icons up here to add notes. It also comes with this stylus. There's actually no place to put it on the reader like the old Sony readers used to have, but it does come in the box. So we've got that option here. You can uh, do the, all the on-screen markup, the on-screen notes, whatever you want to do. And we've also got the little eraser icon right there if you want to get rid of something. So as far as the other options go, we can also hold down on a word. So you can do notes that way as well. And we've got that send to option for if you want to send your notes to Evernote, um, like I said, I couldn't get the Facebook to work, so it's not really going to do anything. But uh, you can also do the highlights. Obviously, the dictionary shows down here. So we've got the different dictionary options. You can go in here and change the dictionaries. Um, that's actually the, um, you can search in the dictionary directly from right there. And then if you click on this, you can actually go in and change the dictionary. So there's these uh, six different dictionaries to choose from couple of translation dictionaries. Got the search features and some of the other features. Um, obviously we've got the um, landscape mode, like the old readers as well. Uh, they always have landscape mode here. Um, Sony readers always have landscape mode. So that's something you don't get like on the Nook and the Kobo. Not all the readers have landscape mode and it does work very well on Sony. And it's definitely an advantage for PDFs as well. So with the navigate page icon there, you can just jump to pages as well. It's also got previous view, so you can jump back to where, it, where you were. And it's got these arrows that take you, um, you can go back and forth exactly where you were. See, it even changes the orientation, because it remembers what you were doing. It's kind of cool how that uh, history works on the uh, PRS series. Um, the other PRS T1 and the older PRS T1 uh, models had those as well. So it's actually a pretty cool feature that you don't get on a lot of the uh, uh, other e-readers. So unfortunately, the way uh, the PRS T2 handles collections really hasn't improved from how the PRS T1 handles collections. So what you got to do is you got to come into the collection section here, create a new collection, type in the name, um, and then uh, then you got to go back in. It's, it'd be nicer if you could just add the books from here. I mean, I don't know, or do it from the main menu. But then you got to go back over here to the book section, and then you can go in and choose each individual books to add to the collection. As you can see, this thing isn't exactly lightning fast. So then you come in here and you can add to collection. You just select which um, file you want it added to. So there's one problem with the folders set setup is that if you want to add files from an SD card, you actually have to create the collection on the SD card because you can't create a collection on the internal memory using books from the SD card. So uh, like I put internal memory for this specific collection so now I only get to choose the books that were actually in the internal memory so it's kind of a convoluted setup here but I mean it does kind of work as far as the collections go it'd be a lot easier if it just supported folders directly because this um, SD card I got in there it's all folders and it doesn't do any kind of folder setup at all it just sort of throws all your books in here and uh, in order you've got the different sorting options 
So you've got these different sorting options. And you can also view them as a list if you don't want to view the book covers. And that does speed things up as far as that goes. So Sony Marcus, this was coming with the Harry Potter ebook. It comes with the first Harry Potter ebook. It comes with this flyer that tells you how to do it. You have to go over to Pottermore and then uh, sync it with your account. You don't actually have to use a credit card. You just enter the code given on the back of that flyer. So you don't have to have a credit card to set up. So that's kind of nice. But you do have to set up an account at Pottermore with the email address and your uh, name. And then you can uh, go ahead and get your free Harry Potter ebook right here. So as you can see, I've set it up so that it has the um, crop margin here because I felt like the margins are just too big normally. I'll show you what it looks like normally. So yeah, the uh, crop margin does come in handy for that if you want bigger margins. As far as uh, line spacing, the Sony readers don't have any option for adjusting line spacing. So you do have the adjustable fonts, you've got the adjustable sizes, but uh, and you can adjust the uh, margins with that margin crop feature, but uh, there is no uh, setup for uh, actually adjusting the line spacing. That brings me to uh, a topic I wanted to bring up here. Um, I noticed between the PRST1 and the PRST2, uh, they don't render the books exactly the same. So here's the same exact ebook. As you can see, the PRST2 is fitting more words on the screen, and they're set at the exact same font size and font type. As far as speed goes, if I were doing this at the same time, I mean, the two react pretty much to the same speed. And, uh, as you can see, here's a good example of the partial refresh. Uh, versus the full refresh of the old PRST one, so it only does it like every six page on the new one. If you hold down the buttons like before, you can scan through really fast. Definitely uh, speeding up on the uh, PRST2 right there. Okay, so one other detail I wanted to show with the same ebook in the same book is uh, the PRST2, its screen background, it's a little bit lighter than the screen background on the T1. It's not a big difference, but it is noticeable when they're side by side. I imagine it's not going to show up on the camera. Uh, in a weird twist, actually, though, the T1. It's the fonts are darker, so I have the same font set on here, the same font size, and they actually look darker on the T1. They're a little bit bolder. Um, the text is just thicker than it is a little bit than it is on the newer one, which I find kind of strange. Um, but uh, that is definitely um, one minor difference between the two. So Sony removed audio support on the T2. It doesn't have any kind of audio support anymore. The uh, T1 had a headphone jack and you could listen to uh, music. Uh, we've still got the web browser. The web browser basically works the same. Um, it's actually halfway decent as far as um, e-ink web browsers go. Uh, it scrolls well and it does uh, work pretty well. Obviously the Evernote Clearly thing tie-in, it works better for uh, if you want to read blog posts and news pages and stuff like that. You can just have it sent to your reader and it will format it to essentially be an ebook so that's a definite advantage of that as far as that goes you don't need to use the web browser for that kind of stuff uh, where the web browser does come in handy is it comes in handy for downloading ebooks through Dropbox for instance like I have my Dropbox account set up in here and I can go in and draw uh, download my ebooks through here different PDFs if I just want to switch something from my computer on here really quick it's so much easier than hooking it up with uh, a USB cable uh, another advantage with the uh, web browser is you can go to websites and download ebooks directly so like uh, I go to feedbooks sometimes and download ebooks from them. Um, so that's a, a definite advantage with the uh, web browser. So it's not limited to just the Sony ebook store. You can use that to download ebooks. And like I said, we've got the pinch scrolling and the zooming. Um, so you can go in and change the orientation with this as well with the web browser. We've got some different settings. But uh, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of details with this because I already did a a full web browser review with the PRST1 and uh, everything's basically the same. So once you download something it'll show up up here. We've got the notifications so right here you can download stuff and then it shows my Evernote scene complete right there so uh, you get to your settings up there and we can clear that if you want. And obviously we've got the Sony Reader Store built in for downloading ebooks through them. Uh, you can also download periodicals. Takes it a few seconds to load up. And then once it's loaded up, you're good to go. They've got the different sections, obviously, and the usual type of sorting options.
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this uh, video review right here. Uh, check out the ebookreader.com. I'll have the written review for some more info. Thank you for watching.